morning and a very warm welcome to our worship from home. I hope you all remember to turn your clocks back and you weren't expecting to see us an hour ago. This morning is our monthly service and continues with our theme of building a better world. It's our chance to catch up with our younger members and see what they've been up to. Once again, I have the very sad duty of letting you know about the death of one of our friends, Dorothy Horton. I'm sure that those of you that knew her will have memories of your own, but I will always think of her as a smart and elegant lady. Tom tells me that her funeral will be at the crematorium on the 5th of November at 12.40pm. Our thoughts and prayers are with her family at this difficult time, and if you wish to contact her daughter Jenny, then see Wendy, who has her details. In church news, we held a church council this week and made some very difficult decisions due to the current COVID restrictions and our area being in Tier 3. We sadly will no longer be able to offer space in church on a Sunday morning to watch the service and the church will be closed altogether for the next two weeks as some of the SMC kids staff are in self-isolation and so unable to continue safely with the children's sessions. We hope that these measures will be in place for only a short time and that we'll be able to offer you some better news next month. I think that's all from me this week. So before we hand over to Tom, will you join with me for a moment of quiet? Dear Father, we thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. As we open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has
Welcome to SMC Kids and their work for the month of October. The first week was entitled Reaching for the Goal. It was a recognition that the race of life isn't always easy, that sometimes there are obstacles in the way. Other times we have the freedom to run outside in the beautiful fresh air. Then they began to write some key words that were important about the running the race of life. The younger children also followed the same theme, but what they did was make medals, some gold, some silver, and of course all elaborately decorated, and then they had the opportunity to wear these medals, and then finally, with great joy, to go outside and run races together. You can see from the looks of their faces the great pleasure they had in undertaking this task and the great pride with which they wore their medals. The second week was entitled Peace of Mind, and here we begin with the youngest, who learned how to say don't worry in sign language, and then made the kinds of things they don't really like, and then they put them all in a basket and gave them to God. There were quite a few spiders and quite a few snakes in there. The older children had quite a task to do. They had a template that enabled them to make a lunchbox, which they decorated with great joy, and then had the opportunity to sh put a note inside to show someone that they were thinking about them. Week three. They thought about imitators and influencers, and again we start with the young ones. They began by writing some prayers of thanks for all those people they thought about imitating and being influenced by. And then they played a game of Sophie Says. And when Sophie says, they have to react and do exactly as she did. It was great fun, you can see that from their faces. And then outside they went, lined up, to say their prayers to be taped for this Sunday, and I'm sure you will have seen. The older ones also spent quite a lot of time thinking about their thank you prayers for all those influencers and imitators in their own lives. We hope you enjoyed seeing our work We'll be back with you at the end of the month. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands.
one Pharisee was an expert in the law of Moses. That Pharisee about Jesus a question to test him. The Pharisee acts teacher with command in the law is the most important. Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. This is the first and most important command. And the second command is like the first. Love your neighbour as you love yourself in the law and the writings of the prophets depend on these two commands. Brothers, you know that our visit was not a failure. Before we came to you, we suffered in Philippi. The people there insulted us. You know about that. And when we came to you, many people were against us. But our God helps us, helped us to be brave and tell you his good news. Our message was a message to encourage you. We were not trying to lie. We had no evil plan. We were not trying to trick you. But we speak the good news because God tested us and trusted us to do do it. When we speak, we are not trying to please people, but we are trying to please God. He tests our hearts. You know that we never try to influence you by saying nice things about you. We were not trying to get your money. We had no selfishness to hide from you. God knows that this is true. We were not looking for praise from you or anyone else. We are apostles of the Christ. Christ. When we were with you, we could have, have used your authority to make you do things, but we were very gentle with you. We were like a mother caring for her little children. Because we loved you, we were happy to share God's good news with you. But not only that, we were also happy to share even your own lives with you. Abba, Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my will forever be evermore your own. Never let my heart grow cold. Never Father, let me be yours and yours alone. Abba, Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my will forever. and yours
Pray that they have a lot of confidence, kindness, patience, but a little bit of strictness, very caring and understanding. Pray for the other strangers, homeless, hugs, employed people who've got no job, homeless who lives in the streets. Thank you for listening. that they have the strength to set an example. Pray for patience and understanding for those encouraging us to do good. Pray for the kindness to help others. I in spousing, no nice, for forgiving, le for loving and listening, you understanding, e affect us, ne knew you, ke at caring, e everyone change. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 You are here
Last week, Tom talked about imitators and influencers, a theme picked up by the young people as part of their roots lesson and reflected on in their prayers and work. There are two things in particular that I noticed. One was their reflections on the people who influenced them, and then the game in which they followed Sophie and sought to play out that game of Sophie Says. It made me reflect on those people who have had a positive influence on my life. So I'd like to pick on four from very different periods of my life. I could obviously have picked many more. In my teenage years, there was the Reverend Bill Stubbs, the minister in Bawtry, and responsible for work with young people. We had many a long conversation and did a lot of work and planning together. The second was Joey Bitson, the head of Waverley School, appointed me to what was then a scale post and supported me in my application to become a head. The third was Jeff Sadler, a primary advisor with Rotherham, who I worked with on issues of IT in school. Finally, Alice Gaunt, who I met when we came to live in Sprotborough and to worship here. She was a member of the congregation and we would often visit her and talk about matters of faith. Note I picked two from my career as a teacher and two in relation to church. All these people had characteristics in common, characteristics which made them good, positive influences, and it's on those that I want to focus. First, they were gentle characters, but they were all made of steel. They had a clear vision, but didn't seek to impose their ideas by force but by gentle persuasion. I always thought of Joe as the real gentleman in manner, behaviour and dress. <laughs> I've never lived up to that last aspect. You just have to ask Jean. Secondly, they cared about me and showed it in their concern. When things didn't go right or when I was anxious or unwell, they all challenged me and made me think it wasn't about platitude, it wasn't about simply being nice, because that would never have moved me forward. They listened to me in my foolishness, but thought there might be something there worth encouraging and developing. They gave me an opportunity to find my voice. Bill Stubbs encouraged me to become a local preacher. <laughs> He's a lot to answer for. Joe encouraged me to undertake study for an MA, almost unheard of in a primary teacher. I'm not appreciated by certain Doncaster counsellors who thought during interviews that uh, I thought too much of myself, suggesting that I was perhaps too clever by half, whatever that means. I hope I listened, observed and learnt from them, for they taught me much about how to become an influencer. So from very different backgrounds and very different perspectives, they all displayed similar attributes, a gentle yet firm approach, an approach that displayed care and compassion and a genuine desire to nurture and develop my faith and understanding, not for their own gain or aggrandizement, but from a selfless, loving and helpful perspective. After I had reflected on these things, I went back to that passage for today where Paul reflects on his time at the church in Thessalonica. These were some of the ideas he wanted to get across about the ways in which he sought to influence them in their pursuit of faith. He wants to talk about their motives. Notice he begins by saying, our message was a message to encourage you. He went on to say, when we speak, we're not trying to please people, but to please God. He also very much sought to emphasise that we were very gentle with you, like a mother caring for her children. At the harvest service, I talked about nurturing. And Paul's final comment here is very much the idea of nurture, when he talks about we were like a mother caring for her children. There's no doubt that young children feel safe in the company of their mothers, usually with complete justification. They also soon learn to trust others. If Sophie from SMC Kids 
was to leave the other children in a Sophie says, you know that she's not going to lead them into danger because even at her tender age, she shows that she is thoughtful and caring. Being an influencer has become an in word. On the internet, there are people through YouTube, Facebook and Instagram, etc., who have huge followings. There can be considerable financial rewards for those with large followings and who recommend certain products. Paul raised the issue of motives behind being an influencer. He was keen to say that we were not trying to get your money. So what are the motives of those who seek to influence us? Paul goes on to emphasise his own motives and methods in promoting the gospel. But what about others? Throughout history we have seen people who have been able to exert huge influence, but have their motives always been the right ones? We still see people using their influence either to gain power or to make money. I've read a number of historical novels over recent months that reflect back on the Nazis' time in power in Germany and the way Hitler found the means to influence people and public opinion, usually by appealing to some of the worst features of the human character. There's no doubt that he and his followers sought to stir up hatred for certain groups and then played on people's fears, such that few were prepared to stand up for what was right. It led to concentration camps, gas chambers, and the annihilation of millions of people. As my rambling thoughts progressed, I began to reflect upon some modern influencers who have tried to present a much more positive image and have a much less selfish point of view. I thought of Malala Yousef, a young activist for female education and a Nobel Prize laureate. She nearly died for her cause as the Taliban sought to silence her. She took huge risks as she stood up for her cause against those who would wield power and hatred against her. There's Greta Thunberg, a Swedish environmental activist trying to increase our awareness of the relative negative impacts of climate change with a desire to empower young people to make their voices heard because in the end it's their world that is being changed and their futures played with. She's up against many powerful groups and some politicians in other parts of the world who suggest there's no such thing as climate change. Then there's one less prominent on the world stage a young girl called Emma Gonzalez, a pupil who survived the house school shootings of 17 of her fellow scholars in Florida. She started a march for our life to try and get people to realise the need for gun control. She's faced real opposition from the National Rifle Association, whose use of money and influence dominates much of American politics, where so often they suggest that the solution is more arms, not less. Despite over 15,000 people being fatally shot in 2019. I feel encouraged that all the people I mention are young. It gives me some reason for hope that there are people out there, and I'm sure there are millions more, who are working to build a better world. As Paul states in his letter that in the words of the children's version of the passage, God helped us to be brave and to tell you his good news. As a result, his visit to Thessalonica was not without success. As I was writing this, one of our members called me for a chat and reflected upon her own motives for helping one of her neighbours. But she worried in case there was any selfish motive. But I know that her help came from a position of love and care for others as part of her Christian faith, something she repeatedly displays. So why do we want to be influencers? Well, Paul sums it up when he says that he came to tell them the good news of God's amazing and transforming love, as shown in the life and death 
of our Saviour Jesus Christ. The other set lesson for today is from Matthew. We are reminded of the commandment of Jesus to give us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul and to love your neighbour as you love yourself. This has to be our motive for all we do. It's a transformative act for our own lives and as a result for the lives of others. Think about all those who have influenced you in a positive way and helped you on your journey of life. Do you, like me, remember their caring and compassionate approach, their gentleness set within a steel frame, one in which they offered you help and guidance, not by saying nice things for the sake of it, but in order to encourage and move forward. There were no lies, no evil plan, no desire for financial gain, no selfish motives, but genuine love, care and concern. What will we take from this letter? Will we check out our motives? Will we seek to see if our motives fit in that commandment of Jesus? Are we happy to share our lives with others in the joyous knowledge of the good news of the kingdom? Let's make our voices heard not just through our words, but through our actions. As a result, there's no doubt we will help to build a better world. We don't seek to have followers for ourselves, but for our Saviour. Be brave, be bold, for the Lord your God is with you. He will be your motivator, he will be your influencer, and he will make a difference to your life and through you, the lives of others. Yes, we can build a better world.